ancient book of Enoch is a book that was quite popular during the first 700 years of church history, but then faded from sight. Nobody republished it. It disappeared until the book of Enoch was rediscovered in the Ethiopian region of Abyssinia. Embark on a captivating journey through the rich tapestry of the Bible's history, unraveling the profound narratives of both the Old and New Testaments, from the genesis of humanity with Adam in the idyllic Garden of Eden to the poignant demise of Jesus' disciples, this enlightening video promises a transformative experience. Prepare to be enthralled as you delve into the ancient tales, gaining a deep understanding of the scriptures. By the time you conclude this enlightening viewing, your connection to God's Word will be revitalized. However, the key lies in opening your heart to the profound message within. If you've ever struggled to comprehend the Bible, fear not, for this video is designed to bring clarity to its intricate teachings. The story begins at the dawn of time before creation itself. At the epicenter is the eternal God, uncreated and the origin of everything. Witness the divine act of creation where God shapes the heavens and the earth. On the sixth day, the pinnacle of creation emerges as man, made in the image of God. The perfect union of Adam and Eve in God's garden is marred by their fall into sin, plunging the entire human race into a profound abyss of depravity. Explore the repercussions of this fall as Cain, driven by jealousy, commits history's first act of fratricide, killing his brother Abel. Yet, amid the darkness, a glimmer of hope arises with the birth of Seth, heralding a lineage devoted to God. Despite the righteous efforts, wickedness and violence once again spread across the earth, God, in his wisdom, chooses to cleanse the world through a great flood, sparing the righteous Noah and his family. Join us as we unravel these captivating stories and more, experiencing a journey of edification and enlightenment through the scriptures. Through the lineage of Noah's sons, a diverse array of peoples found their origins as God initiated a fresh start. Shem became the patriarch of Semitic nations, while Ham's descendants laid the foundation for African and Asian nations. Japheth, in turn, became the ancestral root of European nations. As the narrative unfolds, God handpicked a family to serve as the vessel for the promised Messiah. Calling Abram from Ur of the Chaldeans, God led him on a faith-filled journey. Abram, now a pilgrim of faith, left behind his land and kindred, erecting altars to God along his path. The saga continued with Abraham and his nephew, Lot, who eventually became the progenitors of two nations, the Ammonites and the Moabites. At 75 years old, Abraham received God's promise of a son, who would be the catalyst for a numerous nation and through whom all families on earth would be blessed. After an 11-year wait, Sarai, no longer trusting in God's promise, provided her maidservant Hagar for Abraham, leading to the birth of Ishmael, the forefather of the Arab people, historical adversaries of the Israelites. When Abraham turned 99, God appeared once again, instructing him to count the stars, symbolizing the vastness of his descendants. Despite a period of enslavement lasting 430 years, God assured Abraham of the fulfillment of his covenant. Abram's name was transformed into Abraham, signifying father of a multitude. The child of promise Isaac was born when Abraham was 100 and Sarah, his wife, was 90. Isaac, marrying Rebekah after 20 years of barrenness, became the father of twin sons Esau and Jacob. Jacob, later named Israel, birthed twelve sons and one daughter. Through Joseph, the second-to-last son, Jacob's family relocated to Egypt, settling in the fertile region of Goshen. Over the course of 400 years, these 70 people multiplied remarkably in Egypt. Under the guidance of Moses, around two million people, including 600,000 men, embarked on a journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. What was initially anticipated to be a three-month trek stretched into a 40-year odyssey due to the people's lack of faith and the negative report from ten spies sent to scout the promised land. The spies' pessimistic account incited a rebellion against God and Moses. 
Faced with the perceived giants of the land, the Israelites felt small and underestimated God's power. In response, God imposed severe consequences, condemning the entire generation, except for faithful spies Joshua and Caleb, to perish in the wilderness. The subsequent 40 years saw the people wandering in circles. One year for each day, the land was spied out. The desert became a vast cemetery, claiming the lives of those who left Egypt, leaving only Joshua and Caleb to lead the conquest of the Promised Land. Following four decades of wandering, a six-year phase of conquering the land unfolded under Joshua's leadership. Despite the victories, much land remained unclaimed. Moses' servant Joshua introduced the people to the Promised Land with a divine calling and extraordinary empowerment. Upon Joshua's passing, a 330-year era of theocratic rule commenced, known as the Period of the Judges. This time witnessed spiritual instability and fluctuating circumstances in Israel. The people's disobedience led to oppression by various enemies. God, however, raised notable leaders like Gideon, Jephthah, Samson and Samuel to guide them. The desire for a monarchy emerged and Saul was anointed as the first king by Samuel. Saul's 40-year reign began humbly but ended in pride, cruelty, rebellion and apostasy. David succeeded him, reigning for another 40 years. David, despite serious sins, earned the title of a man after God's own heart. His lineage brought forth the Messiah. After David's death, his son Solomon reigned for 40 years, characterized by wisdom, wealth and renown, marking a pivotal period in Israel's history. In his era, man constructed the Grand Temple in Jerusalem, experiencing a reign of peace. However, Solomon's heart became corrupted due to his multitude of wives. Only in his old age did he turn to God, repenting of his sins, marking the culmination of 120 years of the United Kingdom. The journey of the kings unfolded with Saul falling into the snares of witchcraft, David into the trap of adultery, and Solomon into the clutches of idolatry. Despite God granting the people's desire for kings, the consequences of this choice were profound. After Solomon's death, the kingdom split because his son Rehoboam refused to ease burdensome taxes, leading to the division of the nation. The opulence of Solomon's reign, sustained by excessive taxes, led to discontent among the workers during the transition of power. Unable to align with the new king, ten out of twelve tribes conspired against Rehoboam, following a new leader, Jeroboam, forming the northern kingdom with Samaria as its capital. This kingdom endured for 209 years, marked by 19 kings from eight different dynasties, none of whom were righteous, all turning away from God and following the ways of Jeroboam. Driven by political motives, Jeroboam I established alternative temples with golden calves in Bethel, Gilgal and Beersheba, diverting worship from Jerusalem. All 19 kings in the northern kingdom embraced this perverse path, forsaking God. During this period, prophets like Amos, Hosea and Micah emerged, bravely denouncing the nation's deviations, corruption and prostituted religion. They confronted political corruption, social injustice and economic oppression, calling for repentance, yet their messages fell on deaf ears. The reign of Ahab and the influence of Jezebel introduced the pernicious belief in the Canaanite god, Baal. God raised the prophet Elijah to expose this pagan deity, and later, Elisha succeeded him in a prodigious ministry. As Israel continued to turn away from God, the Lord, using the language of the rod, brought Assyria against the nation. Assyria, as the instrument of God's wrath, became an expansionist warrior, inflicting atrocities and barbarities upon conquered peoples. Following conquests, the victorious would often leave behind mutilated bodies and gruesome displays at the gates of conquered cities, subjecting the defeated to profound humiliation. After King Sargon II led the northern people into captivity, he reshaped the demographic landscape by sending a mix of various peoples to the land of Israel. This deliberate racial blending aimed to weaken the potential strength of the people. The result was a hybrid community known as the Samaritans, bitter enemies of the people of Judah. In the southern kingdom, composed of the tribes of Benjamin and Judah, 
there were twenty kings, some like Isa, Jehoshaphat, Hezekiah, Jotham, Uzziah, Joash, and Josiah were known for their godliness. When these righteous leaders ascended the throne, the nation flourished economically, morally, socially, and spiritually. To fulfill the prophecy of the Messiah coming from the house of David, only one dynasty ruled in the southern kingdom. To guide and warn the people of Judah, God raised up prophets such as Isaiah, Micah, Joel, Zephaniah, and Jeremiah. Despite this guidance, the nation became deeply corrupted, ignoring God's voice. In response, God disciplined them by delivering them into the hands of their enemies, and the Babylonian army invaded, leading to the Babylonian captivity. During captivity, God raised up prophets like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, contributing to the people's purification from idolatry. Synagogues emerged during this period. Following God's predetermined time, the people of Judah returned to their land. By then, Babylon had fallen to the hands of the Medo-Persian Empire. Cyrus, foretold by God 200 years before his birth, liberated the Jewish people and facilitated their return to the land of Canaan. The return occurred in three waves, led by Zerubbabel for the reconstruction of the temple, Ezra for teaching the law, and Nehemiah for the reconstruction of the walls and the political and spiritual restructuring of the people. Upon returning from captivity and commencing the reconstruction of the temple, the Jewish people encountered challenges. The cunning Samaritans initially sought to join the effort, intending to disrupt the work. When the proposal for partnership was declined, the Samaritans escalated their tactics, resorting to threats. Subsequently, they wrote to King Artaxerxes, accusing the Jews of conspiring against the Medo-Persian kingdom. Faced with this malicious persecution, the temple construction was halted for about 20 years. During this period, the people, in a lapse of zeal for the house of God, focused on their businesses, neglecting the dilapidated temple. In response, God raised up prophets Haggai and Zechariah to call the people to repentance. Their message had a swift and profound impact, leading to the people's repentance and a renewed commitment to complete the temple's reconstruction. A great spiritual awakening ensued, marked by a restructuring of families and the priesthood as the people wholeheartedly returned to God. Over the next 100 years, a new generation emerged. Although they continued going to the temple and offering sacrifices, their devotion waned. They began presenting blind, sick and lame animals as burnt offerings, disregarding the sanctity of the Lord's table. The priests became corrupt, ceasing to teach the word of God. Marriages faltered, ending in divorce as the people lost faith in God's judgment and relaxed in returning tithes. Despite attending the temple, they grew distant from God. In this period, God raised up Malachi to call the people to repentance, marking the conclusion of the Old Testament 400 years before Christ. Subsequently, the interbiblical period or the period of prophetic silence unfolded, lasting 400 years. During this time, non-canonical religious historical books, known as the apocryphal books, were written. Additionally, the Old Testament was translated from Hebrew into Greek, resulting in the renowned version called the Septuagint. The Medo-Persian Empire fell to the Greek Empire under Alexander the Great, who after conquering nations and kingdoms, died prematurely at 33 years of age. Having conquered every known land, Alexander the Great expanded his empire, spreading Hellenistic culture and the Greek language. This later proved instrumental for the swift and widespread dissemination of the gospel. After Alexander's death, the empire fell into the hands of four generals, with the Egyptian Ptolemies and the Syrian Seleucids dominating, leading to conflicts and the intermittent dominance of Israel by one or the other. During this time, Antiochus Epiphanes further outraged the Jews by sacrificing a pig on the altar of the temple in Jerusalem, sparking the Maccabean War. Judas Maccabeus emerged victorious after significant bloodshed. In 63 BC, Pompey conquered Jerusalem, bringing Roman dominance to Israel. Herod the Great succeeded him, known for his administrative prowess. 
He expanded and beautified the Jerusalem Temple, built the port of Caesarea, facilitating international trade and missionary travel, and constructed the fortress of Masada, along with numerous palaces and fortresses. However, Herod's insecurities and violent tendencies marred his rule. Fearing the loss of his throne, he married ten times, had many children, and committed ruthless acts, including the killing of family members. His paranoia led to the murder of his nephew Archelaus, appointed high priest, and later his own wife Mariamne. Even his sister Salome was not spared, as he forced her to swear to kill a nobleman from each Jerusalem family during his funeral. Herod's death in 4 BC marked the division of his kingdom among four of his sons. Archelaus, ruling over Judea, Samaria, and Edom, proved to be a tyrant. The Jews sought Roman intervention, leading to the installation of a Roman procurator or governor in Judea. This marked the beginning of direct Roman rule over Judea. During this tumultuous period, Pontius Pilate governed, overseeing the dire political state in which the chosen people of God found themselves. Under the oppressive rule of the Herodians and subjected to Roman domination, the need for a Messiah, a beacon of political hope, became palpable. A cry for liberation and redemption from the shackles of ungodly bondage. It was precisely at this juncture that Jesus, in fulfillment of biblical prophecies, was born in Bethlehem, Judea. The eternal word took on human form, dwelling among us, embodying grace and truth. He adorned himself with human skin, walked in humility's sandals, traversed our lands, partook of our bread, drank our water, felt our pain, shed our tears, carried our sins on the cross, and rose in glory for our justification. In this era, both Hellenistic and Roman cultures converged with the Jewish contribution, setting the stage for the Messiah's arrival. Born amidst Roman rule and the persecution of Herod the Great, Jesus' earthly journey commenced. Fleeing Herod's wrath, Joseph, Mary and baby Jesus sought refuge in Egypt, returning to settle in Nazareth after the wicked king's demise. Growing up as a carpenter's son in Nazareth, Jesus began his ministry at the age of 30, marked by baptism in the Jordan by John the Baptist. As Jesus prayed, the heavens opened, the Father declared his pleasure in his beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove, empowering Jesus for his mission. Led by the Holy Spirit, Jesus embarked on a 40-day fast in the desert, enduring three temptations from the devil. In this spiritual battle, Jesus wielded the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, triumphing over the adversary who had overthrown the first Adam in paradise. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus journeyed to Galilee, arriving in Nazareth, his hometown, where he spent a significant portion of his earthly life. In the synagogue, he read from the scroll of Isaiah, proclaiming, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach, heal, and deliver. Calling twelve men as his apostles, Jesus invested considerable time in training and discipling them. He embarked on a journey, preaching, healing, and delivering, leaving an indelible mark on the world. Traveling through Galilee, Pera, Samaria, and Judea, Jesus preached in cities, villages, and fields, addressing both large crowds and intimate gatherings. His message echoed in synagogues, the temple, outdoors on the beach, and within homes. Jesus, with a mission to do good and liberate those oppressed by the devil, traversed everywhere bringing healing and hope. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, restored sight to the blind, straightened the paralyzed, enabled the lame to walk, granted hearing to the deaf, cleansed lepers, freed the possessed, and even raised the dead. Emmanuel, God with us, was the supreme revelation of God in human form, born with a defined mission, to die so that we could live. The Apostle Paul emphasized Jesus' purpose, stating that he died for our sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day, as foretold in the Scriptures. Jesus' death and resurrection weren't accidental or surprising, they were pivotal moments in the cosmic battle. On the cross, Jesus crushed the serpent's head, triumphing over powers and principalities, completing the work of redemption. Death couldn't hold him back. On the third day, Jesus rose again for our justification. Before ascending to heaven, Jesus instructed his disciples to await the Father's promise in Jerusalem. Acts 1, 
8 outlines the empowerment by the Holy Spirit and the strategy to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Following Pentecost, the church in Jerusalem experienced explosive growth, with multitudes continually added. Yet, as it remained limited to Judea, God allowed persecution, scattering believers. Philip, breaking through walls of enmity, arrived in Samaria, preaching the gospel with power, leading to great rejoicing as the Samaritans received the Holy Spirit through the laying on of the apostles' hands. The gospel then spread beyond Israel's borders, notably with the conversion of Saul of Tarsus, the persecutor turned believer. The church in Syrian Antioch became a hub for multicultural missions. Barnabas and Saul embarked on their first missionary journey through Galatia, establishing churches in cities like Perga, Derbe, Iconium and Lystra. On their second journey, Paul and Silas extended their mission to Macedonia and Achaia, planting churches in Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea and Corinth. Paul's third journey included an extensive stay in Ephesus, from where he wrote letters to the Corinthians. During this time, churches flourished in Asia Minor, including those in Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea, Colossae and Hierapolis. Amidst these endeavors, a famine prevailed. In the tumultuous times of Emperor Claudius, the Jews faced expulsion from Rome, as chronicled in Acts 18, 2. Responding to the crisis, Paul rallied Gentile churches, collecting donations to aid the impoverished in Judea. Embarking on a perilous journey to Jerusalem, Paul, undeterred by the challenges, shared with the elders of Ephesus his unwavering commitment to proclaim the gospel of God's grace. Before setting sail, Paul penned his robust epistle, The Letter to the Romans, expressing a deep desire to visit the empire's capital and share the transformative message with the church. Despite providing significant financial aid to Judea's poor, Paul faced arrest in Jerusalem, subsequently being transferred to Caesarea. Accused for two years by the Jews under governors Felix and Festus, Paul, facing a potential transfer to the Sanhedrin and a planned death, exercised his Roman citizenship, opting for trial in Rome. During the treacherous journey to the imperial capital, a shipwreck occurred, miraculously sparing all passengers and crew, a fulfillment of God's promise to Paul. On the island of Malta, a viper bit Paul's hand, yet God intervened, neutralizing the serpent's venom. The Maltese, witnessing miracles, sent Paul to Rome with provisions. In Rome, Paul spent two years in house arrest, evangelizing the Praetorian Guard, encouraging believers, and writing letters to the Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. Following his release, Paul wrote the first letter to Timothy and the letter to Titus. However, around 64 AD, the persecution of the church shifted from religious to political, leading Paul back to imprisonment in a dark, damp dungeon. On July 17, 64 AD, Nero's fire engulfed Rome, marking the beginning of a brutal persecution against Christians. Lack of wood forced believers to face crucifixion and burning alive, a grim massacre. From this second imprisonment, Paul composed his final epistle to Timothy, foreseeing his martyrdom and embracing the glorious hope of eternal reward. Around 67 AD, the veteran apostle was beheaded, leaving behind a blessed legacy, the New Testament. Written over 50 years, it comprises four graphic gospels, Acts of the Apostles, Paul's letters, general letters, and the eschatological book of Revelation, as heirs of the Pentecost-born Church, we continue this remarkable story. May God bless and transform your life. If you haven't accepted Jesus, there's still time. Repent, seek God, and witness the transformative power He can bring to your future and story. Close the door, talk to God, and embrace the hope He offers. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. God bless you.